Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something new man on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Liar. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and resume this crazy trial, shall we? It looks like we're about to get. Oh, we're about to get a, a little heated here, possibly. Anyway. Alright. Your punishment will be decided later. <clears throat> Though, looking at your face, I'd say you already got your punishment. As unwarranted as it was. Continue. Lyle turns and looks down at me before continuing. Eden said that assuming this dagger would be forged. Eden said that assuming that assuming this dagger would be forged and bought in a place like Le like Lyre and Aaron is a very common mistake. The origin of this dagger, however, is Driss. Surprisingly, the crowd behind us is silent, listening to what he has to say. Typically paired with thrusting swords, this dagger can also be used by itself in grappling. Kadaj lets out a scoff, but Lyle ignores him. Thrusting swords were invented in Lyre and became exceedingly popular in Northern Aaron. However, that does not rule out the fact that a Rondel dagger could come from Driss. That is the case with this dagger. How can you tell? It looks very plain to me. The guard and pommel of this dagger is made of arenamite. It's not gold. The crowd breaks the silence and begins to spread whispers throughout the room. They sure are getting their entertainment. Arenamite, for those of you who don't know, is mined in the south. It is of a similar quality to gold, but equally rare and hard to distinguish. He draws his sword from the sheath on his back and holds it out to the crowd. Just as rare as Vecrite. Adrius leans back in his throne, his eyes trained on the table, his eyes trained on the blade, but his expression is the same as it has been for the past few minutes. Lyle holds up the dagger. This blade is from Driss, and it is unlikely that Lord Leuven would have come, to in come into possession of it. Only someone who is the highest class of noble would own something of this quality. Lord Kadaj, do you fence? What exactly are you implying? He is implying nothing. Adrius leans forward on his throne, his eyes finally leaving the dagger and falling upon Kadaj. However, what do you have to say about this, Lord Kadaj? Kadaj pokes his finger into Lyle's chest, his claws clinking against the metal. Yes, I fence. I participated in many duels back in Driss. However, if the Rondel dagger is the rapier's best friend, when the parrying dagger is its wife, it is known that I much prefer those two weapons together. He lets out a scoff. Honestly, accusing me of such a such a, of using such a civilian tactic. Kadaz doesn't even care that Lyle just accused him. He only seems to care about his reputation and his choice of weapon. The crowd seems to find this funny. There's an uproar of laughter, and even though a few of the nobles are giggling behind their hands. Lyle stands there, shocked, but quickly regains his composure. This killer didn't use this, this dagger with a sword. They only used the dagger itself. Lyle, enough. The clothes on my back are from Driss. The plates we eat off are from Driss, or from Eris. Even if this dagger is from Driss, it doesn't change anything. I think it changes everything. Leuven is not wealthy enough to purchase a foreign treasure like this from an Arrhenian market, let alone going to Driss and getting it himself. Why do you say that? Until recently, they've never been outside of their own kingdom. As far as I know, they've only recently become a noble. That's the part I find most odd in all this. There's too many questions I have about his origin that simply go unanswered. That's not the point. Send for Eden. Send for Eden. He will explain it better than I ever could. I'd rather hear it from the person who sold this knife, but I'm afraid that's just not possible. Lyle, I humored your request out of fairness, but this is ridiculous. Fairness? My voice sends an echo up, up towards the throne, bouncing off the wall behind it. The three standing before me turn and look down, having almost forgotten I was there. You speak of fairness, yet this entire trial is botched. Be quiet. I grow tired of this mockery. Shut up! I did not kill your father, but if it will put a smile on your face, kill me now and be done with it. Stop talking. I'll participate in this charade no longer. Silence! Adrius yells this, his words bouncing off the walls, and the entire audience silent in his... Silent as the grave. Lyle's looking down at me, shocked and nervous. He then dons a face of disappointment. Kadaj was shocked at first, but now seems to be studying the scene as it plays out. Both of you. Both of you return to your places. One second, y'all. Water time. Oh, damn, son, this is getting good. Kadaj begins to walk over, returning to his seat. Lao stands there for a moment, before reluctantly taking his position among the guards. Before Kadaj can return to his seat, I call out to him. He once asked me where my allegiances lie. Idris jilts his head in my direction, but says nothing to stop me. Where do yours lie? Kadaj stops walking, standing in place. His tail swishes from side to side before turning around to look at me. 
with Tigran Leuven. As he takes his seat, Adrius begins talking as if nothing had happened. There's one more individual I would like to question before anyone gives their verdict. Who else Who else could he possibly bring up? If I recall, that's everyone I interacted with that night. I call upon the servant, the one who tended to Lord Leuven the night of the solstice. What? What could he possibly contribute to this? The servant stands up from their chair and begins to, to make their way over. I hadn't noticed him until now he was sitting towards the back. I might have noticed him when I entered the room if my mind was already overwhelmed by everything else. At this point, I'm sure Adrius has already won. Why would he even need to go any further? Especially pulling a card like this. It makes no sense. Before I can come up with the with a conclusion myself, I look over at Lyle. Instead of facing forward like the rest of the guards, he turns his head in my direction. I can't really see his face behind his helmet, but I get the feeling that he knows what Adrius is up to. Badger walks up the side of the hall and takes their place in front of Adrius at the bottom of the second, second row of steps. They turn around to look at me, their expression neutral. I can't shake the feeling that something is wrong. Please state your name. It's Gerhard, your highness. Could you please describe the events of the night and what happened? Please be sure not to leave out any details. Adrius, this man was never questioned. What are you... Adrius turns to her, raising his hand. Please, continue. The servant bows low, swaying their arms up behind their back. Of course, your highness. I have been one of the servants tending to Lord Leuven for a while now. Of course, most of the time, it doesn't really feel that way. You see, Lord Leuven rarely accepts the help of servants, leaving most of his tasks up to himself. Of course, it's not something I'm unfamiliar with. Your father was the same way. He glances back at me, but Adrius cuts in. Don't look at him. Just tell us what you know. Gerhard lowers his head and continues. I was asked to retrieve Lord Leuven for, the, for his meeting with King Raynor. Knowing he had already left the ball, I went searching for him in his quarters, but Lord Leuven was not there. Assuming he had, he had already known about the meeting, I guessed that he had already left for it. That was until I remembered his close relationship with Sir Reed. I figured I would go check with the good knight's quarters to see if he knew where Lord Leuven had gone. Adrius? Adrius shoots a look at Lyle, but Gerhard continues. When I arrived at the door, I heard something I believe I shouldn't have. At the time, I didn't really understand what I was hearing, but looking back on it, it all makes sense. Whispers about the king. What? That is not true! Quiet! If only I had figured it out then, but I foolishly brushed it off. I assume Lord Leuven was only talking with Sir Lyle about the audience he should have with the king soon. The other thing I found odd was the fact that Lord Leuven was with Sir Lyle in his own chambers. As his guard, it should, have, it should be known that Sir Lyle would accompany Lord Leuven to his own chambers. He was ill! Silence, Lyle. I did not wish to be rude by lingering outside the door for too long, so I knocked on it. It took a while for them to answer, and I heard whispers from the other side. Once the door opened, however, I... How should I go about this? Lord Leuven was standing before me with must clothing and hair. Sir Lyle, however, was practically naked when I caught a glance at him through the doorway. Several people in the crowd gasped, and a few of the nobles scoff and groan at hearing this. That feeling I had in the ballroom is starting to come back. The embarrassment. Humiliation. Look to my left and see Liz with her face in her hand. It was quite a sight. Why is this servant lying about me? To be that they're the killer? No, that doesn't make any sense. But don't tell me they actually... Second y'all, water time. Disgusting. I hear a chair scoot across the floor as Kadash stands from his seat. I fail to see how this has anything to do with the problem at hand. Even if it's true, I see no issue with it. Hmm. Well, of course you wouldn't. I've heard scandalous stories about you, too. Scandalous stories that died a little bit too soon, if you ask me. Kadash sneers at her. Stories? Caden and I are that famous? I'll be sure to let him know. Everyone quiet! The throne room quiets down and Kadash takes his seat, along with the others. Finish your story. Gerhard's shoulders slatch and he continues. I look over at Lyle and he's fuming. I informed Lord Leuven about the meeting and then he then I and then I left. I thought nothing of the whispers and plots at the time, but I should have known. I'm so sorry, Your Majesty. Please forgive me. There is nothing to forgive. Thank you for your account. You may return to your seat. Gerhard begins to walk down the steps and steps off to one side, but Lyle throws off his helmet. This is ridiculous. He's lying. None of that happened. You've spoken out of turn too many times. You're going to silence yourself before I replace your helmet with a muzzle, do you understand? Lyle opens his mouth to say something, but looks at me and steps back. With this, Gerhard walks back to his chair. Good. My legs feel weak as I look around the throne room. I glance at the nobles, and most of them are looking at me with a scornful gaze. 
This is the only one who looks concerned. Adrius turns to them and speaks. My lords and ladies, it is time for you to cast your verdict. Slowly, each of the nobles stands for their chair, Liz being the last to stand. At this point, I feel empty. All I can do is glance and lie, glance and lie every few seconds and hope things turn for the better. I look over at Leaf. His head is hanging low, and I can tell he doesn't like where this is going either. We are going to start with you, Minister Elizabeth. The throne room is silent. It is dead silent. I see her look up at Adrius with a pleading face before looking down. I... I vote that he's... Innocent. Hearing that word come out of her mouth was not quite, it was a nice bit of validation, but it wasn't enough to quell my dread. The next noble, the small stoat, raises his paw slightly and gives his verdict. I vote that this young man is innocent. There is clearly something more sinister at play here. I mean no offense toward your late father, your majesty, but please consider this a possibility. Another innocent verdict. Adrius glares at Lord Braden, but makes no move for a rebuttal. He has this look on his face like he knows with absolute certainty what the results will be. Even if he doesn't. I don't know what his answer will be. Even if he doesn't, I know what his answer will be. I have a feeling I know what the other nobles' verdicts are, too. That feeling has poisoned my stomach, and I have a feeling it will kill me with a final vote. Guilty. Before I even realize it, Lady Rena has raised her paw and cast her vote. He was taken red-handed and is clearly demented in some way. Before I can even want to deny her claim, Lord Galen bangs his cane on the floor. Innocent. I can only hope that true justice will be delivered. He looks at Adrius as he says this, his long beard swaying with each word. It is what your father would have wanted. Another lord who thinks I'm innocent. Guilty. Guilty. Two more votes. And they were, too, and they were fast, too, without any explanation. It's even now. Lord Grimdall stands from his chair, the seat scooting back as his large body rises into the air, towering above all. I vote this boy guilty. Fill my air, leave my lungs as my chest tightens. Three votes, three voted innocent, four voted guilty. I fall to my knees and look down at the ground. No! I hear Lila let out a faint groan across the steps, but it sounds muffled. In fact, my ears are ringing, my entire body feels a bit numb. One second, y'all. Oh, God. He didn't do it, you! I hear Lyle begin to run up the steps, but I see two guards rush him down and grab him by the arms. Nobody says anything at first. All that can be heard is armor grinding against armor and Lyle's grunts. Lyle, I will have you removed from this room if I hear another word out of you. Do you understand? He says this in a cold voice. I've never heard him speak like that. I just keep looking down at the ground, hoping everyone will just forget about me. Maybe Aegis will just throw me in a cell for a long time. At this point, I wish I could just go back to my cell. I hear footsteps approaching me from ahead, and they sound like hooves. They stop, and a few moments later, Adrius addresses me in another sharp tone. Look at me! It doesn't register at first, but after a few seconds, I look up to see him standing over me. Lord Leuven, you have been found guilty of the murder of King Raynor Ossian. This includes treason, regicide, crimes against peace, and the sowing of discord throughout our great kingdom. And, I'm afraid, mental agony is not an excuse for such a crime. His words rub deep into my skin, but I can't feel the anger. Everything is still numb, and I can't stop thinking about just going back to my cell and curling up into a ball. My head is even starting to hurt again. I feel as if everyone's eyes are on me. Figures I can't even see. As I said before, the two of us are very different. This is all just a game to you. If I'm being honest, you're right to believe that. That's how it's portrayed in this cruel world. He looks over at Lyle and then looks to the noble standing on the left before bringing his gaze back to me. Our profession has always been seen as a game. Some are better at playing it than others. He bends down so that his eyes are level with mine and lowers his voice to a whisper. You've always been my opponent in this little game of ours, ever since the day you and that cat arrived here. In my opinion, it only makes sense that you would arrive at such drastic measures so soon. And I'm afraid you've lost. Another pain in the sides of my head hits me. He stands back up, throwing his cape back behind his shoulder. Don't feel bad about it, though. You did your best, and I don't blame you for trying to get away with it. Those who are out of their element often have to live by one's wits. What? My force, my eyesight is taken for a moment as I feel my body pulled away from reality. Before I can even realize what's happening, I'm thrown to the ground, crashing into a hard object. I can do his cough and sputter as my body slumps against the wall behind me. Fear, anger, shock, and sadness. These emotions overwhelm me on a scale I'm not even capable of comprehending. Or maybe I'm just numb to it. Tears rush down my face and I can taste blood in my mouth. The back of my head carries an immense pain, and one of my arms feels limp. The other arm is clasped, is clasped on my stomach, blood pumping out of the fresh wounds and seeping into my clothes. 
The thick crimson substance floods out between my fingers, staining the golden brown fur. Standing over me is him. A figure cloud in a dark leather cloak, brandishing a slender and vicious dagger dripping with blood. His garb is also covered in blood. No! The unbearable pain, I catch a glimpse at their face only for a split second. Eh. Rainer coughs up blood and reaches out a hand, the arm shaking and weak. But please! The figure kneels down, swatting the hand away. The hand Rainer was extending to his son. Yep, I knew it! Fucking knew it! You little son of a bitch! Adrius! He leans in, pushing Rainer's head back as his, by his antlers and drags the knife across his neck. It cuts deep and it feels just as real as last time. The pain is awful and I can feel my grip on reality fading. How did this happen, though? And where are, the, where are his antlers? He had already grown them back by that point, right? No, this isn't possible. He wasn't there. He wasn't... As Adrius lets go of Rainer's head, it slumps back into its recent position and Rainer looks up at him. Adrius looks angry, but scared at the same time. His eyes are wide open and I can't get an accurate read on his expression. It's like he's conflicted or lost. Fuck! No, Laura Chan, shut up! Gritting his teeth and looking back with regret? No. He's just a coward. S a weak, spineless coward. It's confusing and the pieces aren't all there. This has to be a sign from Tigran. I know Adrius did it. I know it in my bones. As the life leaves Raymer's body, I can feel all the anger and hate from the past weeks rushing into my own. When you have nothing left, revenge no longer seems like the worst option. It couldn't be helped. Ah! <laughs> Yelling at the top of my lungs and without hesitation, I push myself out of my kneeling position, lunging forward at the deer. Oh! Damn! I hear the impact before I can even feel it in my fist. You bastard! My knuckles smash into the side of his muzzle, spinning his jaw as he's thrown back. I have to throw the punch using both of my hands as they're chained together, but it lands just as hard. The chain from the shackles flings out and whips him across the face, slinging blood onto the floor along with the blood that spits out of his mouth. Adrius! Y your Majesty! I hear Liz and Leaf yell out, along with several nobles and everyone in the crowd letting out shot gasps of horror. I collapse to the ground, feeling like all the energy I had left was spent doing that. His crown flies off his head, landing on the ground near me. Immediately, I notice that the gem on the top is cracked, bits of it scattered across the floor. I don't have much time to think about why I did it, and what's going to happen next, though. Adrius stumbles back, dazed and confused before tripping over the step. Holy shit! Adrius! Oh my god! I try to rise into a kneeling position and look up at what made that sound. As I get on one knee, two guards tackle me to the ground, forcing me onto my knees. Even with the force of two men pushing me down, I still managed to glimpse what I had done. Adrius is, prop is propping himself up against the stairs, eyes full of shock. Blood rushes down the side of his head from where his antler snapped off, dripping onto his clothes. Oh, shit! There's a large cut on the bridge of his snout, and his nose is bleeding. He must have hit his head on the, on the steps and broken the antler. You! You! Leaf tries to rush to his side, but Adrius pushes him away. Get away from me! He looks at me, his eyes filled with rage. i never seen them like this. i never seen him like this. Arrest him! Arrest him now! Take him back to his cell where he can rot! He's the one who did it! Lyle, I was right the first time! He killed him! He- I feel a guard's arm wrap around my head as I try to gag me. Lyle! I look around the room, but I don't see him anywhere. Liz and Leaf are standing there shocked, Leaf slowly inching toward Adrius trying to help him. It was him! Adrius- the king shoves what I think is a rag into my mouth. The guard's pulling on both sides and tightening it. The nobles are rushing to Adrius' side, and the crowd behind us is in, com is in commotion. I hear people running around, adding more to the chaos. Adrius, please! Let me... Where's Lyle? This comes out as a whisper, and I almost pick up a hint of fear in his voice, as not knowing where Lyle is. Where is that dog? I want him put down now! Where is he? Don't just stand around. Find him! Liz, have the gates to the city closed. Nobody is getting in or out until that mutt is found. The two guards lift me and start to drag me out of the throne room. Your head will rot in the dirt, bastard. Everything feels like it's moving in slow motion. All I can do is watch as the chaos ensues. Let go of me! I try to wriggle out of my... Wiggle out and stop, and stop the guards, but as soon as I do it, one of them brings their fist back and slams it into my face. To be continued. Holy shit. Oh shit. And y'all were not fucking joking with that twist. Oh my god. 
Holy shit. All right, y'all. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. I gotta watch a movie with my parents. Anyway, y'all, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.